I need to do this. I need to do the hand thing. Hi, I'm Abby. I have a lot of records. And this is Vinyl Monday. <laughs> Welcome back, or welcome, if this is your first time here. Vinyl Monday is the series where once a week I sit down and just talk about a classic album I love. If 20 minute or however long this episode is going to be episodes aren't your thing, don't worry. I also do Vinyl Monday in 60 seconds, both here on my channel and over on my Instagram. Before we get into this week's episode, last week was our mid-season finale. We're on season two of this thing, and we're already six months in, which is wild to me on its own. But not long after I posted the mid-season finale, I hit 10,000 subscribers here on YouTube. This happened a lot faster than I expected. So first, so I stopped my rambling, Thank you so much. Whenever you join this long, strange trip, thank you. I can't wait to see where this thing is going to take us. In terms of the 10k Q&A that I promised, I will be posting my Q&A post on my community tab next week. So I'll have the Q&A video uploaded the week after that. I'm very busy this week. It, um, I feel like my whole month schedule filled up in like two days. Mm. But please be patient with me. I'm going to have that up as soon as possible. And then we can do something fun on this channel. I love doing fun things that aren't Vinyl Monday and I rarely have time for those. So thank you for voting for the Q&A if you are a part of that. I host polls and I post memes and hints to next week's episode over on my community tab. Congratulations if you guessed this one. This week's album is Houses of the Holy by Led Zeppelin. This is this record's 50th anniversary this week so I had to cover it and I won't be doing Zeppelin again until August. It'll be a while and then no more for the foreseeable future because I will have covered all the Zeppelin albums I have. Hey, enough of my rambling. Let's get this show on the road and take the plastic off. My copy is a repress, not much special information to give there at all. So let's talk about this cover art. This was designed by Hypnosis, the favorite album art designers of Pink Floyd. It seems 1973 was a big year for those guys. Though it's under the Hypnosis name, the Houses of the Holy Art, in truth, was done by one half of Hypnosis, Aubrey Powell. What happened to the other half? Oh boy! Jimmy Page essentially said that Storm Thorgerson got himself fired from this project for being a smartass. What did he do? He submitted the first draft of this art, which was just a tennis court because he said the music was such a racket. This is like my fourth take and I can't stop laughing at that story. If I wasn't already a Storm Thorgerson stan, then I definitely am now. This art was inspired by the sci-fi novel Childhood's End. Fun fact, Pink Floyd has a song named after that book. And this is a composite image. It's a, about 10 or 12 shots stitched together of Stefan and Samantha Gates. I guess Stefan is a TV personality now. Very cool. Uh, this art was hell to get. It took 10 days to get any usable shots for this because it rained so much at the Giants Causeway. It was spring. It was Ireland. Not sure what they were expecting, but okay. This iconic orange tint was half a way to colorize Aubrey's black and white art and half a complete and total accident. And I love the effect that we get going from this orange tint on the front and back. Opening up the gatefold, there's this brilliant blue. I know, wow. I'm trying my best to keep my hand here. Uh, otherwise, the YouTube terms of service gods just might smite me. If I were to move my hand, there would be a hole and very visible butt here. Since some of you seem to have the media comprehension skills of Swiss cheese, holes and all, I'm going to use the Houses of the Holy Art as a little teaching moment here. Let's talk blind faith. 
thanks to a so bad it's good thumbnail and what was apparently a flaming hot fucking take, uh, the Blind Faith video is now my most viewed episode of Vinyl Monday. I think it's the most viewed video on my channel. And in the time since posting that video, the comment section has become a cesspool that reeks of you're not allowed opinions unless they're the same opinions as me. First of all, the rumors are true. Yes, I am a Zoomer. Boo. Go cry about it. Next, if you do a little digging, like I do for all my videos, not just Blind Faith, you'll find Bob Seedeman's statement from the 90s that he released in tandem with prints he made of the Blind Faith art. There he states his artistic vision. If you go seek out his vision and read it, you might have the same realizations I did. First of which being, wow, this guy has outed himself as a pretentious douche. Then, oh, so this wasn't supposed to be taboo or a depiction of Eve before she bit the apple or a depiction of Madonna and Child. I've seen that come up more than once, not sure why. Seedeman's idea was placing man alongside technology. That was the crux of his vision. Don't you think that that vision could have been better executed if he photographed a woman instead of a child? But I was alive in 1969 and it was fine then. Okay, if you were alive that long and did the same research I did after over 50 years of that album being out, uh, you'll find out about the maybe slightly edging on coercive means that Seedeman went about to get the photo. Thank you to Storm Thorgerson's book for outing that information. However, you also have to take into account that the model herself is okay with the photograph. I'm very happy that she's okay with the art and I'd love to see her recreate it sometime. I think that that art would be even more effective if she was photographed at her age now. All of this does loop back to Houses of the Holy because I feel it's important to take into account how the child model feels in adulthood about the art. Uh, it certainly makes the Nirvana baby thing more complicated. Stefan isn't a huge fan of the Houses of the Holy art. He doesn't even really listen to Zeppelin. But Samantha is okay with the art, and she actually came back for the back cover of Presence. So controversial album art like this and Blind Faith, it's all totally on a case-by-case -case basis. What I think makes the Blind Faith art so flawed is the ill-advised choice to use a child in a concept that doesn't warrant such and would actually be more effectively conveyed by photographing an adult. Seedeman's okay concept, but poor execution is what makes me feel not okay about the Blind Faith cover art. You also have to take into account that I was once an 11 or 12 year old girl. I feel like some of the commenters have forgotten that. The Houses of the Holy art, on the other hand, you could apply the interpretation of Eve before she bit the apple, because she doesn't even know that the viewer is here. Her back is turned to us. And the context with how these models feel about the art in adulthood, while adding a layer of complexity, for sure, it doesn't muck with the artist's intent. Seeing this, you might still think that use of children on the Houses of the Holy Art is wrong, and that's okay. You can make a serious case for that, but that's what all of this is about, right? And that is how I put my art history degree to use. Bitch. Right, um, sorry for that being long-winded, but... I felt I had to address that in order to uphold my integrity as a whatever I am on this platform and whatever I am to you. Back to the music. On Houses of the Holy, we have Robert Plant on vocals, Jimmy Page on guitar, 
John Paul Jones on bass, piano, organ, and mellotron, and John Bonham on drums. This record was produced by Jimmy Page and engineered by George Chiquette, Keith Harwood, and Eddie Kramer. Roll transition! <laughs> So it's 1972 and Led Zeppelin is basking in the glory of not one, not two, not even three, but four smash success self-titled records. The best received and most iconic of the bunch being this one, Led Zeppelin 4. This came out back in November of 71 and spawned Zeppelin's greatest hit to date, for better or for worse. Stuart Evan. After years of being ragged on by critics purely for being Led Zeppelin, so much so that they left their name off their previous record, the guys had finally ascended to the upper, highest echelon of rock and roll. At this point, anything they put out would sell, and as you can imagine, that gave the guys a lot of creative freedom. The addition of home studios also gave the guys a lot more creative freedom. I mean, think about it. You can hammer away at an idea until it's fully formed at any hour of the day you please. You're completely freed of the operating hours of a recording studio. George Harrison did it, and both Jimmy Page and JPJ did it leading up to Houses of the Holy. This proved to be quite advantageous for the recording process. The guys went into recording with fully formed ideas and didn't have to work around the hassle of writing and recording at the same time. It seems the seeds of what would grow into Houses of the Holy were rattling around in Zeppelin's pockets for a while. Over the Hills and Far Away had the working title of Many Many Times and was written as early as the Zeppelin III sessions. Mark that as the first of many times Zeppelin III is going to be mentioned here. Speaking of George Harrison, considering how interconnected all of the British bands were back in the 60s and 70s, George Harrison had been aware of Zeppelin since the very beginning. There's this great moment in Get Back where George mentions the release of the new Jimmy Page record. That being Zeppelin 1. So at some point, George Harrison tells Bonzo that the problem with Zeppelin was that they didn't have a good ballad yet. Of course, Bonzo goes and tattles to the rest of the guys, and this is how I imagine things going. Oh, no good ballads, you say? The crunge only happened because Bonzo was f***ing around. It was intended as a tribute to James Brown, I guess, and Bonzo's idea was to create a rhythm that you absolutely could not dance to. And that's how we get the whack-ass usage of the 5-4 time signature. Take 5 has entered the chat. That is not a reference to the Blind Faith video at all. Houses of the Holy was recorded through 1972 at Headley Grange, where Zeppelin IV was recorded, and Mick Jagger's home Stargroves via the Rolling Stones mobile. Wouldn't you know it? Just like Zeppelin IV. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. Because the Houses of the Holy material was recorded over a year before the actual album came out, Zeppelin got to play a lot of this material on tour while they were actively working on this final project. I think that's really cool. And hey, if you saw Zeppelin live in 72, like I've seen some of you in my comments section say, you probably heard some of this stuff at your show before the album came out. That's so cool to me. Believe me, there's a lot more lore that comes with this record, but let's get into the music itself first. The track listing of Houses of the Holy goes as follows. <laughs> Opening up side one, we have The Song Remains the Same, followed by The Rain Song. Then, over the hills and far away, and side one is closed with The Crunge. Opening up side two, we have Dancing Days, followed by Jamaica. Out of all of the spellings I could come up with for Jamaica, this is the last one I could have 
ever thought of. That song is followed by No Quarter, and the album is closed with The Ocean. Houses of the Holy was released in March of 1973, 50 years ago this week. This album was intended for a January release date, but was delayed by, you guessed it, album art. Yay! You win nothing for guessing that. But for those of you keeping track at home, this means that three of the four Zeppelin albums I have covered were delayed by album art. These guys had shit luck with packaging. This was Zeppelin's last record with Atlantic. After this, they'd form their own label, Swan Song. Atlantic was still their distributor. It's important to note that, but remember, the label and the distributor did two very different jobs in the 70s. A decent chunk of this album would become live show staples for Zeppelin. They promoted the hell out of this record to make sure that it would be number one on the charts by the time they went on their 73 touring cycle. My Outfit Today references that very famous photo of Robert Plant with the dove on his arm. He's wearing a little blue shirt like this that he clearly borrowed from either a groupie, or a girlfriend, or his wife, someone. Whoever's shirt it is, it's very clearly not Plants, and I love it. Uh, this album even bore the namesake of their concert film and corresponding soundtrack, the song remains the same. I think there's some kind of no quarter release or box set two. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong on that one. It's been a good few years since my Zeppelin phase. Houses of the Holy sold well, sure, but critical reception was well and truly all over the place. Chris Gow, ever the pretentious douche I mean contrarian, gave it one of the highest ratings he ever gave a Zeppelin record. I mean, he did rag on No Quarter, which proves my idea that he was wrong about most things. It was generally positive, though. On the other hand, Gordon Fletcher of Rolling Stone was profoundly disappointed. He recognized the group's marked departure from what they were putting out a short five years ago. I'm gonna read a little from my notes for this. Even after a hundred listenings, I'm still not convinced this is the same group that brought us the likes of Communication Breakdown, Heartbreaker, and Black Dog. He cited Zeppelin leaving behind the blues as well as Plant's changing vocals as weak points and calls the crunge one of the worst things Zeppelin has ever done. He dubbed this, and I quote, one of the dullest and most confusing things he'd heard that year. So, basically, wham! I wanted Led Zeppelin 5! But Gordon wasn't wrong about Plant's changing voice. So, so when you speak, swallow, or sing, uh, your vocal cords go a little like this. Uh, this is a healthy movement for them, keeps them nice and flexible without too much stress, and won't cause vocal decay. What happens when you belt, shout, or otherwise record videos on classic rock history for the internet is you're slamming your vocal cords together like this. This is not sustainable, and this is how you get nodules on your vocal cords. After five years of singing the way he did, uh, pushing his voice as far as it could go almost every night, Plant had practically shredded his vocal cords. He gets surgery sometime in 74, exact dates aren't clear, to remove the nodules he developed, and his voice is never quite the same. The plant we hear here on what I believe to be his vocal peak is not the plant we hear here or here. And hey, remember Stargroves, one of the locations that was used to record Houses of the Holy? It also served as a location for this album, sort of. A few songs recorded during the Houses of the Holy sessions, those being The Rover, Black Country Woman, and 
Houses of the Holy were left off the final Houses of the Holy track listing. When it came time to record a follow-up, the Zeppelin guys found that they'd written more than enough material for a single LP, but not enough for a double. So what they did was they pulled material previously left on the cutting room floor from other album cycles as early as Zeppelin III to fill out a double album. Thus, you get physical graffiti. Though it doesn't quite make the same splash as some of the other Zeppelin releases, Houses of the Holy does get its time in the pop culture spotlight. Rain Song was featured on the soundtrack of the film Almost Famous. It was that scene where Sapphire is explaining to us what it really means to be a groupie. Truly love some silly little piece of music or some band so much that it hurts. Man, Sapphire was just the coolest. Like, everyone else, all the other Band-Aids, were waiting outside for Black Sabbath's limo to show up. Sapphire was smart enough to be in the limo with Sabbath. But otherwise, speaking of Houses of the Holy's legacy is interesting. I find, as a Zeppelin fan, that the songs of Houses of the Holy, like Rain Song, Song Remains the Same, No Quarter, are remembered individually, but Houses of the Holy as a unit has been a little forgotten. This is an easy album to overlook, seeing as it's kind of the unloved middle sibling of Zeppelin IV and physical goddamn graffiti. So, what do I think of the unloved middle child of the Zeppelin discography? What do I think of Houses of the Holy? Oh man, this is certainly a record. It can be easy to dismiss because, well, it is a flawed record. Choices were made and not always the best ones. I see Zeppelin IV and Physical Graffiti as sister albums. They're varied in style when you're talking about from song to song, but they still have an easy to identify as, oh, this is Led Zeppelin sound. And they're both career, decade, genre-defining heavy hitters. And they're both great. I also see Houses of the Holy as a sister album to Zeppelin III. They're equally eclectic and experimental, equally divisive, they suffer from almost identical powers and pitfalls, and they're both orange. Tangerine counts for making Zeppelin III an orange album. No, I will not be taking questions at this time. So first things first, leaving the title track off this one was a big mistake. We should not have the crunch taking up the space of Houses of the Holy on Houses of the Holy. For the life of me, I cannot figure out why Zeppelin would make a choice that so blatantly harms the quality of the final product. My first listen through of this album was over Spotify while I was doing my hair and makeup in the morning. I got the rain song after the song remains the same and I stopped what I was doing so I could see if I maybe left my Spotify on shuffle, but I didn't. I was baffled the whole way through after being away from this album for so long. I did not remember it being so scattered going in. Poor sequencing is a problem I rarely encounter on this series. I've been lucky enough to avoid it, but it's one of my pet peeves. This sequencing makes no sense. I've come up with an alternate track listing with what I feel is a better flow. You can agree or disagree with this, but I do want to know what you think. My cut of Houses of the Holy would still open with The Song Remains the Same, then The Rover, then Over the Hills and Far Away, and Side A would close with The Rain Song. Opening up side B would be the title track, Houses of the Holy, followed by Jamaica, 
then Dancing Days, then the album still rounds out with No Quarter and The Ocean. I originally had Song Remains the same, closing side one. I definitely had to warm up to it as an opener. Uh, it stayed the opener though, as I feel uh, Rain Song is a better side one closer than a track two. This sequencing upholds what I think are the strongest points of the original sequencing, No Quarter on the B-side and The Ocean as the closer, and remedies weak points. It swaps Jamaica and Dancing Days, I just like this better, and includes the songs that I feel should not have been dropped from this. Hear ye, hear ye, this is not me hating on the crunch. I'd shuffle that over to physical graffiti so it gets its time to shine alongside other rock and roll homages like Boogie with Stew and Black Country Woman. Physical graffiti has an almost comical amount of strong points, including but not limited to the Wanton song, Kashmir, and the entirety of Side 3. Side 3 is the strongest side of physical graffiti, and I will fight you on that. With with its length, that album can handle and could even use an oddball like The Crunch. Like, I don't like the song, but I also don't hate it. I find it difficult to get into, probably because it's intentionally difficult to get into. I have very little patience for the 80s used car dealership commercial jingle keys, but I do get a chuckle out of Where's That Bridge. While Four Sticks and Kashmir both have Zeppelin using wonky time signatures to a song's maximum effect, the Crunch's time signature fuckery is time signature fuckery for time signature fuckery's sake. For that reason, it doesn't quite hit the same. And hey, wait, you'd keep Jamaica on this album? Yes, justice for Jamaica. Would it be a Zeppelin album if there wasn't at least one song so absurd you just had to laugh? It can be Jamaica or The Crunch, it can't be both. Uh, it's unreasonably good for what it is. Plant's vocals sound great, Paige keeps his solo short, sweet, and smooth, and Bonzo adapts his heavy drumming for the reggae thing surprisingly well. And if it weren't for Jamaica, we wouldn't have Lady Gaga. I'm not kidding, Lady Gaga got her start in a Led Zeppelin cover band, go look it up, it's kind of awesome. Thank you, George Harrison, for Rain Song. I'm pretty sure the one-man orchestra on that song influenced its use on one of my longtime favorite records, Siamese Dream by Smashing Pumpkins. Plants really come into his own as a writer here. Springtime of my loving, summer of my devotion, coldness of my winter. It illustrates love growing old, like the light half of the year coming and going. And I see the torch we all must hold is keeping the light strong during the dark half of the year or the dark times of love. Despite being a sweet song, Rain Song has this sense of yearning still. It's like a baby 10 years gone. I love how watery this album is. You know, rain, ocean, beachside reggae, and that murky effect on Plant's vocals in No Quarter. This whole album is like Zeppelin on an expedition to Atlantis. With all these water motifs in both lyrics and production, I couldn't help but wonder if Plant had a water sign on the brain, and sure enough, his wife at the time, Maureen, was a Scorpio. Speaking of No Quarter, holy hell, I could pour over this song for hours. It's dark and murky, hypnotic. This is a moment where the production of this album really shines. Plant's cries of this is the path where no one goes are harrowing. I got chills up my spine when I was listening to this song on a three hour drive home. There's this murmur through the coda of No Quarter that I haven't ever heard before. Uh, what's going on? Underneath, they hold no quarter, they ask no quarter. It might just be another round of those lyrics, but it sounds like something different. And when you listen close to no quarter, you pick up on something that set Zeppelin apart. It's JPJ and Paige working as a unit. Usually you think, oh, bass and drums, rhythm section, they naturally go together. Uh, and they tend to follow each other too. Nope, 
not here. Yeah, JPJ, MVP of HOTH. I can forgive him for the crunch. Over the Hills falls into a classic Zeppelin trope. The J.R.R. Tolkien song, Zeppelin 2 has one, Zeppelin 4 has one, and Houses of the Holy has one. JPJ once again proving he is Zeppelin's secret weapon. That outro is a delicate moment compared of what we usually think of when we think Zeppelin. I don't know, it definitely is for me. <laughs> it's a delightfully changeable song moving from acoustic to driving electric and comes home to something almost baroque. It's also got one of my favorite lines on the album. You've got the love I need, maybe more than enough. I love the use of maybe. It puts a little asterisk next to the meaning of the whole rest of the song. Just like I like Immigrant Song better live, I like Over the Hills better live. I was glad how the West was won was part of my listening research this week because it cemented my thinking that Zeppelin 3 and Houses of the Holy material have this natural fit together. The ocean is criminally underrated. There, I said it. Both Orange albums have hidden gems of the Zeppelin discography. This one has Out on the Tiles, and this one has The Ocean. JPJ chugging away over that doo wah That really faint, we've done four already, but now we're steady, could refer to the number of takes done of this song, but I think it's a reference to these four. For sure, not all of these are going to be right side up. Um, but it's a nice nod to the fans. While I may not always understand Houses of the Holy, what I admire most at Zeppelin in this stage of their career is their willingness to push themselves. With Zeppelin IV being so wildly successful, Zeppelin could very well have stayed stagnant. They were slinging records like crazy simply for being Led Zeppelin. They didn't have to evolve, but they still did. They still did, and that's a display of artistic integrity. I may not always get it, but I do respect it. This period wasn't without its growing pains, but Houses of the Holy is a display of Zeppelin all grown up. They'd done four already, but weren't steady just yet. They're about to reach a summit like never before. Uh, they're close, but not quite. It's transitional, it's changeable, it's so unique. And that's why Houses of the Holy might be my favorite Zeppelin album. I don't know, it's so hard to pick and that's the beauty of covering these guys. My personal favorites are Rain Song, Jamaica, No Quarter, and The Ocean. If you wanna keep up with all the Vinyl Monday favorites from all the Vinyl Monday episodes, I have a Vinyl Monday Spotify playlist linked in my description. I update it every week. And that is it. That is 50 years of Houses of the Holy. What do you think of this album? Anything about it? The, the music itself, the tour if you went and saw that, or the art? Let me know what you think. I love hearing what you guys have to say about the albums I love. And if you like what I do here, you should like this video and subscribe to my channel. I post new episodes of Vinyl Monday every Monday morning at 11 a.m. And who knows, you might be getting a fun surprise soon. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you guys next week. Bye!